and there we go. Just waiting, there we go. Ready to get into it again. Almost done with star number five. And yes, QD boat. And still quite a ways away from Mutsu. This is almost spaded, so that's going to be definitely happen. You can join me if you're looking, if you want to play 7 out. It is. You are free to join me. Sure thing. Just know that the queues are going to take quite a while. Uh, chicken, what is your in-game name again? Do I have you in... Is that you? Yeah, it is you. There we go. And I'll wait for QD to get online, I guess. I've been enjoying the EC recently. It was stock before the Mutsu came along. And I've got some most of the crucial modifications on it. Definitely still need to get the seaplane modification. But I've, I've really been enjoy enjoying EC. Got some really nice battles in it. Fus is almost spared as well. So yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my conclusion from the fragmentation changes as well, especially for battleships. Amorak meta is back. Which I don't really oppose. It's, it's better than, like, just brain dead metas, but it will. I played a bit of cruisers and a bit of destroyers earlier as well, and the shell fragmentation changes is are noticeable in my opinion, but not really game breaking, I'd say. You still hear a lot of people saying, oh, you definitely need to bring HE or you definitely need to bring XYZ shell. I think if you if you just stick to the shells you've already been using, it's more than fine. HE does feel a bit more potent when it can penetrate a target. Sap, I don't really feel the difference in Sap. Yeah, the, the difference isn't huge, but there definitely is a difference. I played a few battles in the Japanese destroyers again, and those 5-inch guns feel just a little bit better. I keep hitting things around my desk. But yeah. Just wait for QD to get in. And then brave the uh, naval Q times in a three-man squad. Also, I am planning to, as soon as I get Mutsu, with the leftover Golden Eagles, I have immediately put an A screw on it. Just to get the uh, 24 second reload out of it. Okay, there you are. And we are ready to roll. I need to get the green cam on my EC, but I'm getting very close to it. Hello there, Fenrir. I'm not sure if I want to spade my Fuso or just continue like grinding the EC up a bit. Because I've, I've really... Well, the thing is, I've, I've liked the EC, but I've, I've done some funny stuff with the Fuso, with the fact that its third groups are split up nicely. I've managed to with Fusa because the front three turrets are facing the forward arc. The rear three turrets are rear arc. I've been able to like half salvo it. And that gets really funny. Oh, you're not really late. We're only just starting our first battle. Um, Fusa is just as fragile as the others, really. I mean, you can't actually see the stuff was in queue, but it, it, it has exposed magazines. But if you're playing these Japanese battleships, you just have to accept that you'll get detonated. 
But I think Fuso's like vulnerable magazine is the middle one. One of the middle ones. Where then East and Hugo is more the X like the front and back one. I'm not sure. It's really weird because I I didn't really play battleships before this update. And then I've only really been playing battleships after the update, so I really have no reference frame anymore for what is normal and what isn't normal. Especially with the week-long red bug being a thing, I just really threw what uh, my reference for... just really threw my reference away. Yes, the red bug got dealt with, I think, this Monday or Tuesday. It's gone. It got fixed and it's gone. I will say that, that that it's you do take slightly more damage. The, the shells do a bit more damage than they did before the update, but I wouldn't say drastically so. It's it's not like you. It's difficult because on the one hand they do noticeably do more damage, but on the other hand I don't really feel like the time to kill is that different to before the update. Does it really? I, I haven't really noticed that big of a difference. Ah, yeah, maybe in some of the tanky ships, but the thing is, I never played tanky ships. Like, sure, I'm playing battleships, but the Japanese ones just explode. So, mm. Yeah, it might be more significant cruisers and destroyers, because I haven't been playing those ships that, all, that much. And again, the, the ships that I have mainly been playing recently are Japanese. Which, if you carry torpedoes on them, uh, very prone to detonation nowadays. Well, not very prone, but more prone than they used to be. I mean, well, Congo is tanky, but on the other hand, it isn't tanky. It only has an 8-inch belt, which is laughable, laughably thin for a battleship. I don't know. Like, there's definitely a change with the fragmentation, but it isn't a broken or, like, busted or meta-changing change, like, change that happened with the fragmentation, in my opinion. And we start off strong with a big open cap map. Uh, let's see where team spawns, and we'll spawn with it. Enemy is just two two-mans, and nothing I really know. That's good. We're spawning south, middle? Uh, I'll spawn south. Yeah, I think, like, it's it's not an HE buff like many people claim it really is, but it's a nice buff to ships that rely on high explosives. They, they feel a bit more viable nowadays. But it's not like a... It's not the case where you should just use HE and everything now. I should probably be going for the Mississippi because that's a bigger threat. Okay, the ammo storage is roughly one dash away from the engine space. So we're just by one dash. We get our range. We can see the impact indicators there. So that's the actual range to target. We'll lead under a bit and wait for the turrets to get there. Yeah, but I, I think you notice it most on Ichi on ships that rely on high explosive. Because I, I'd still use sap on, on ships that has sap. The ships that have sap.
Let's see if we can detonate the Mississippi in one salvo. Could be that. It could be, be just more consistency rather than uh, anything else. That was a good salvo, just a little bit low compared to what I would have wanted. Also, I need to bind my secondaries to my cursor as well. It should be a good stretch. Let's go to controls. Do that. There we go. Let's watch this uh, of that salvo. It's looking decent. A bit too far forward, maybe. Otherwise, very decent. Let's keep that up, shall we? So whilst we're reloading, we just constantly check on the actual range to target. And we'll under-aim by something like this. And fire. I didn't actually look at my impact in the kitchen, so it'll be a bit... I assume we'll hit the around about underneath the bridge, that salvo. It does look like it. Yeah. Well, could be a decent hit. No engine hits there. Did knock out a did knock out a whole segment. Which might have made trying to hit that front magazine a bit harder if he's flooding. Although that's another thing from this new damage cam, you can no longer see the enemy's like flooding percentage. Which is a bit annoying. Still a bit behind, I think. Otherwise, decent hits. Nice kill on Maria. Got some AI, so I'm too worried. Let's wait for the lead indicator to pop up again. But that Mississippi seems to be riding a bit low in the water. Or, okay, you can take that one as well, damn it. Let's just do some overkill against this PT boat. There we go. Speaking of overkill, an SKR. Oh, again, an AI one. Don't go really close. Fleet. Rear magazine is roughly two dashes away from the engine space. Maybe like a dash and a half. That's right there. Well, this engine is destroyed, so it's slowing down now. So now I'm hitting its front magazine. Which I'm not complaining about, but it missed. Kent will be next. I'm surprised to see you both in Hugas, because that's definitely not the greatest of those battleships. That's a Wyoming and another um, Russian dread behind it. Wyomings are easy to detonate, or relatively easy. Again, engine space, so center of the ship is roughly there, so we need like a dash and a quarter in front. So something like that, we'll wait for the impact point to actually line up. And let's see what that salvo does. In the meantime, let's unleash some seconders against this guy. And there goes the Arkansas. Who would have guessed? Now. Our friend... I don't actually know how to detonate the Russian Dreadnought, but I know you can. He's also stationary, which is not a good idea. Not when I've got Fortnite firing back at you. Uh, ooh, okay, that's the East engine room. That is three dashes. We want, like, half a dash? Either way. Front and rear. Front and rear most. So we want... Dash and a... And a third, basically. Dash and a third. Uh, let's go down. Meantime, again, we'll deal with the Tashkent. Do 
did some damage to the guy. Actually did damage the ammo store on the Russian dreadnought, but didn't kill it. I mean, yeah, we could. I don't want to fire this AP out of this destroyer. Maybe. Yeah, I will. There we go. Now, Russian dreadnought. It's moving now, so we'll have to adjust for that. We'll just keep pushing in. And we'll just dash and a half, roughly, dash and a third. We have to lead. Yep, my guns aren't reloaded yet. But yeah, dash and a third. And should I be careful? It's an AI. It can still launch torps, but yeah. Also, that is now the second time I missed an ammo detonation because. Yeah. Ooh, Italian battleship that has me in his gun sights. That might not be good. Because the Italian guns do hit pretty hard. And we're good. Can we detonate a ro an Italian battleship? Is it actually an Italian one or is it a Nobel um, engine room, two dashes, dash and a half. And there we go. Let's see what that software does. Yeah, mm, I don't think I can reach the magazines of that thing. And there we go, it is a Nova Sisk. That's what we have, back up to four, and other battleships. Where is he? There he is. Yeah, I'll live there. Had a good run, my Yusu, though. Really need to deal with that right now. Attacking. I think that's gonna be over, isn't it? Oh no, that was a good hit. Let's actually knock out that turret. Oh, it did. Did it? It was quite. do now, which I like doing the fuso, is just wait until my rear turrets are half reloaded and then fire the front a half. There we go, more good hits. There's my mark there. But that's fine. Low. Okay, I'm missing my mark, but it's fine. Now we basically just keep uh, making the life of this not for the Cisco worse. We'll see what happens. Although he seems to be very heavily damaged at the moment. working over my squad mates.
enemies and you get, didn't get detonated. Another thing about this damage cam as well is that currently, although never mind, the crew percentage will lie to you, so you don't actually know at how much crew the enemy ship is. But that Novus is going down pretty quick. There's the Britannia. I've been working over my squad mates. Speaking of. That's the Arizona that is angry with me. Oh, we can detonate Arizona if we want to. Um, it's a Dash Rider magazine, okay. So it seems his prompt is listing of bullets severely. Um, range roughly that. I don't think he's moving that quick. There we go. And let's get that middle turn back online. Mm, those were too high. Arizona is angry with me. I think Pania might want to deal with me as well, but I'm not sure. I think he's actually shooting at somebody else here. There we go. More range adjustment and fire again. Fine, that is looking decent. Will it ammo rack there? No, because it was too low. Let's try the front rack, I guess. Although that Arizona looks really low in the water to me. I do not know why it is that low. Let's find the range again. Yeah, there it is. And fire the salvo. Oh, crunch dot. And that's more attractive target. And that is the third battleship I now looked away from as I detonated it. Very well. Crunch dots are always fun targets. Let's do a quick torpedo check. See anything? What is that? An Ooh, that's looking decent actually. A bit too far forward. Yeah, and too high as well. Oh, that crunch is not having a good time, I think. Seeing as it's practically nose in to me, let's just aim at the lead indicator and then it'll hit the hole. Those are looking alright. Actually, a bit too far to the right. Never mind. That's another kill for the board. A bit surprised it actually sunk it, though. It's a hood, Hyuga. Nevada, French, Wy Wyoming, a stationary Wyoming. So let's crawl to a halt. Engine space is in the middle, actually, just middle of the ship. Front magazine is one dash across. All guns on target. Wait for the lead indicator. Let's range and we'll wait more because the. One more update. There we go, we want one dash forward. Come on, the guns are not cooperating with me. Uh, I think there we go. We'll see what it gives us. In the meantime, hood. Can I blow up a hood? I could maybe blow up the Hyuga. Which would be more fun, anyways. I was too low in the way home, wasn't I? No, too high. Okay. Let's 
Yes, I really want to detonate in Moyom because you're just sitting still. And you do not ever sit still in a battleship. Because one, it makes you an easy target, and two, torpedoes. Now, I don't have torpedoes in this ship. Luckily for him. But I do. Fortnite shells, although that's just two turrets. William shooting back, although not moving. Interestingly enough. Come on. Expose my rear turrets. Never short. Taking some fire, lost a few turrets. There we go. And let's do something like that. In the meantime, I need to deal with another Wyoming. Uh, the damage is starting to add up. Let's stop the repairs. I can deal with one less turret, but I can't deal with a fire. And there I go. Go take the EC now again. I should really put a plane in this lineup at some point, but yeah. Uh, destroyer, that's dead. And what do we have there? The battleship squadron that is messing with me. Damn, the 16 inch guns sound meaty. Okay, let's wait for the guns to get on target. Hugo's engine room is roughly... It's a bit less. Actually, maybe there's one marking that I want to lead. Just wait for the rear guns to get on target. I'll give him a full broadside. And... There we go. Let's see what that salvo does. I'm not really the best at long-range shooting, though. They're looking alright. They're definitely looking a bit too... Mm. Ah, too high. Really? If anything, I thought it was going to be undershooting him. Alcat is diving on the Hugo, which might kill him. Wyoming is being... Wyoming? Shells it. Mm. I swore that Halkett was dive bombing him. I think it was a torpedo. Really? The... I'm quite shocked at that. I, I need to inspect it after this match. Or remind to look at it. Remember to look at it. The hood exploding my squad mates, but that is the hood. Yeah, our team is not doing too hot. A bit too high. And the Bayern stole it from both of us. But did they? I haven't actually really tried air torpedoes against battleships at all. Because I know that it just couldn't pan the um, armored belt. But if it did actually get a nice buff, I might have to try it. The 
the salvo seems a bit high. And it is. Oh, there's a bunch of, I, I still really like the P1Y1 just because it's so fast. Um, actually, actually, the P1Y1 is also one of the few Japanese torpedo planes which can go too fast for the Japanese airdrop torpedo. Which is why I really like it. There goes the Tanya, but he's still got a salvo away, so that's a bit concerning. It is moving very slowly. I mean, I quite like the B7A as well, but more as a bomber than anything. And I, th I think, I think I still prefer the P1Y1 to the B7, although I've only ever used those two at their own battle rating. It's way too low. Elevator just destroyed. Do well. Okay, and there goes the hood. We have a Nevada. That's a cruiser. We don't really care about the cruisers. We might actually pull this back by just keep if you just keep on sinking the cruisers. There's a battleship rather. Nevada slow and does have a. Somewhat vulnerable magazine, I believe. Magazine is just under a dash. We're ahead of the enemy. Airdrop mines? I not. Sh I'm not sure. I haven't actually used airdrop mines in ages. Mainly because the only planes I really have are like American. And I don't play American naval all that much. Ooh, that was a decent salvo. I actually managed to splash the magazine ever so slightly. Didn't actually detonate him though. We do have his range now. Although it seems that he has noticed me too. And the Mutsu claims that kill. Uh, do we have any more targets we need to get out of this cap? Awesome. We have been renowned over there. Gary. That is a player to play off, okay. Congo within 10 kilometers might be a more interesting target. Too far behind, although that might be a lucky detonation. Almost was. Actually, no, the shells went well over. A good way to get the range to target. And there we go, battle one. Decent match. A very decent amount of RP as well, but I'm running a booster, I believe. What's next? Probably want to go with some speed modifications, really. Yeah, let's go with propeller replacement. It'll also get me closer to the float plane. Really close to getting the camo as well. What about Fuso? Really, so like 200,000 away? No, 100,000 away from it? Damn, a little closer than that. 
We're almost got the stardom. And let's replace, um, let's say Congo with an aircraft because I think it has the P1Y1 in my slot. Yes, there it is. And they're both ready as well. I'm gonna put the Mutsu in where I'm in the same cruise slot Hyuga currently sits in. So I kind of want to keep that cruise slot f free for the time being. And now we do Q Simulator again. I can, although the Kika sits currently in the same crucible as the EC and I don't really care enough about the Kika to take it. But yes, I could technically take the Kika in the lineup. It's actually also really, it's a decent pick for high tier naval, but I'm not that good with dive bombing um, without a bomb site. I'm not really the biggest fan of Kika. Also, it doesn't have air brakes, so it's a bit awkward for a dive bomber. Like, in general, or currently in-game? Because technically speaking, my, f my favorite class of Japanese ship is battleship is actually the Congo class, and the fact that we already have two of them, very nice. Um, the one I'd like to still see in-game would be the aircraft-carrying version of Ise, just because it looks outlandish. Oh, this is going to be... A slugfest. Uh, early Dreadnought, PK... Actually, is that a nice freestand? Hipper? We don't care about the Hipper. The PK will be our first target because it's a PK. That is a, another PK. That is a Congo. Okay. Torpedoes launched from the Hipper. The PK is already trying to reverse, which I can understand. Uh, front magazine is one dash, let's aim for that. And yeah, I was about to think that the is gonna break it very good. One, two turrets. The rear turrets are almost in line. Off they go. The PK for short. Because I'm not gonna say Parichikaya Kamuna every single time. The morning is that made you chicken. Oof. No, that's the Hipper. Where is the Des Moines? Oh, there's the Des Moines. Oh, that NASA went up. Okay, there goes the Des Moines. Just as, about, as I was about to get the range information on it. Let's try some shooting of my own skills, shall we? The 140 is already giving a good lead for the rear magazine. So let's keep shooting that lead. Find more. And let's hope we detonate a hipper. Or it might actually just crew limit at this stage. American light cruiser looks like a Brooklyn. Let's deal with him. It rather. Reverse. 
interesting. I might actually dodge my salvo. Did. I'm still doing fine. Because he's a Yamashiro. Fire is suboptimal, but still fine. Just keep going until we get behind this island. Not too. I'm kind of familiar with the October Revolution, the Russian ship, but not too familiar with it. Is it is it any special compared to the Russian dreadnought we already have? Than its name. Why am I hearing my. Never mind. I'm surprised it didn't detonate the Yamashiro. Dakota behind there. Yeah. I'll uh, not be happy if those 16 inch guns from the Soviet CU will have perform an 18 inch gun. Also, I won't be shocked either. I think I'm too close to detonate him. Okay. The island, that's fine. That's a full of ton. Let's just shoot it whatever we can, really. I should be able to just slide off of this rock. There it is. How is it? Well, I thought it was a wonder ton. that Arna didn't eat any of my shells. Engines damaged, let's repair that. Ooh, that's a long repair. Seem like many of them managed to push past the choke point. Yeah, I've been having that in the ESP quite a bit. Some weird graphic glitch. Very fun. Yeah, I know. Okay, look at that before I shot. Not the Congo. There's a Russian battleship there. Let's see if my shells can reach it. They did. Not good enough. Now we try and get to that convoy. Still got 16 minutes. The Krim there, but I also see other stuff. And that Eugen seems like a nice target. I think 
technically speaking, um, we won't see Montana in game. At least somebody I know says that Montana was not laid down. So it wouldn't technically fit the game. Although, we'll see when we get to that point. Yeah. So, technically speaking, we won't see it in game. Because we think like the. the Which, I mean, is a bit of a shame, because it is a kind of cool concept, just being Iowa, but with another turret. And probably a fair bit better than Iowa. But I think the Americans will do fine with, um, with Iowa. I, I still kind of hope that the restriction on it has to be laid down for it to be a thing would be... Yeah, technically it doesn't, unless you really want something to deal with Yamato, but I think I will be fine enough. No, it was. If, if you're thinking, Kronstadt actually started construction and do, so did Sovetsky Soyuz. They were never completed, but they did start construction, and that's the that's the limit, really. Also, I'm gonna bomb, so let's do this one more salvo against this cruiser. Let's see what, what's going on here. Ah, it's a Dorian 217 as well. Lame. Oh, there goes both its wings. And it's going off target. Perfect. However, there's another target. Oh boy. Uh, it's just it's just a 109, I don't care. There we go. Yeah, were there four? I know of one. There's like aerial pictures of one being in, in the stocks, for as far as I know. Um, I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm probably gonna spade Mitsu right away. Looking further back in the chat. Because I didn't spade Issa and, and Fusa for the reason to save it for the next Japanese ship. But then what happens is I just have two Japanese battleships that are unspaded and I never play. Even though I really do like my Japanese ships. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see what we'll do with those ships when we get to them. I don't think the Russians really need more than one. Them getting two is probably like the most they need. Two PKs in their spawn, that's kind of annoying. Well, that self is looking decent. Yes. That's a Marat, okay. Not quite good enough at recognizing the difference between the PK and a Marat yet. Yeah, I know. Now, what I do think would be funny is that Japan legitimately gets all of their World War II battleships. Because we already have the majority of them. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, it's a dive bomb B7, never mind. Come on. Oh, the TF should have done something. That was a good save because I think that detonated his bomb. Never mind, it did not detonate his bomb. Yes, we could very much get Graf Zeppelin. And same for the Aquila for the Italians. If we get playable CVs, of course. I'm surprised only one of my turrets got knocked out. I'm not actually too familiar. The only Japanese, like, uncompleted battleships I'm familiar with are the Tosa and the Amagi class. I don't know what the Awari is. Jesus. The, the, the Japanese have, have tons and tons of wacky battleship designs. Although, of course, most of them stayed as designs. I 
I'm I wouldn't be shocked either. But at the same time, nobody else has the caliber equivalent to a Yamato. The thing is, Russia doesn't have any newer battle. Actually, don't they have a 14 inch ship? I keep thinking that they do have a 14 inch battleship of some description or battle cruiser, but I don't remember. Yeah, I thought there was. Like, they could get that, that's for sure. Damage cam is lying to me yet again. I don't think that would be a very fun ship though with only two main guns. Uh, that, that, that's the one, Borodino. Oh, look at that graveyard of ships over there. That could also be a thing. A Royal Sovereign class for the Russians. Although that is just another copy-paste battleship now that they have Novorossiysk. is a bit meh. Although it is a battleship they had. That is a good match. We don't really need to kill any of the convoy ships either because the enemy just has no resistance left. Did I shoot Neskiar at one point? Okay. Oh boy. Is that a PE 8? Of course it is. Where's the bomb? There's a Bomb is not heading for me, it's heading for waffles. I I'm already sorry. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I had a Dutch. I, I'd love to see the Dutch cruisers as well. Well I'm not quite sure what tech trio would put them in. I think I've said this before, but I think I would, they'd fit best in the French factory just because just to fill out the French factory. Well, Eric, I'm shooting at me now. Oh, never mind. I wouldn't put them in Germany. Although the Germans all do kind of need more cruisers, I don't. I, I wouldn't really like seeing them in, in the German tree. I'd rather see them in the French tree. And that's my start on. And speed upgrade, there we go. Let's get float planes next. Just see what kind of goober we can get from them. And there we go. A decal. Yeah, I did actually miss out on the last star. Due to reasons, I was a bit busy. But it will. On to the next battle.
I'm kind of annoyed at the fact that our naval um, event ship is not a Byron class. Although for me it would be quite nice because I don't actually have any of those later German battleships yet. I could, I could, but I don't really care too much about the best called Rage. I mean, I, I'm not in need of a cell at the moment. I feel like I don't really care about the best called Ragers. Not quite sure what destroyer that would be. Not familiar with that. Because again, something I would like to repeat is that I don't actually know that much about naval history. I just know the boats in this one video game. But yeah. If only we could. If only we could donate a cell. But yeah, no, most of the, like, I think I'm going to lose two and a half million on Mutsu. Thereabouts, yeah, two and a half million on Mutsu. Just buying it, crewing it, exporting it, and then some golden eagles to ace it too. Yeah, there's a sample. Yeah, I, I like it as well, that getting the, the ninth star gets you some modifications. Ooh. Yeah, I, I always found tanks to be a massive assault drain as well for me. Although, and not to be too much of a shill, but having a premium account is really useful if you do not want to lose a cell. But yeah. Also, now that we're in a bit of a lull of time, I do have a video planned for this weekend, but I'll have to see if I can actually get through my procrastination to get it out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the red bug sample text is no longer a thing. That's that's been I think the start of this week that they got fixed that they fixed that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Tie Fighter. I have here I've heard some interesting things from a little birdie though, although I'm I'm not allowed to share. Nothing quite interesting for Naval though, so I doubt most of you would even care. And yeah, so I would, I would love to get a Japanese battleship with the main with main caliber anti-air shells, just for the memes. I exported the na the crew of every single ship I have. And can I even go to the crew menu? Yeah. If a qualification, all of my na all of my ships are always exported, with the exception of a few that like share crew slots. Um, because Ayanami, I think, actually has one on this cruise slot, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, Ayanami. Yeah, there it is. So I, I always export, and this is aircraft, I always export all of my naval vessels. Always. Yes, Yamato also had the anti-air shells. I would also just love to see how big of a flag... Like, I kind of doubt they'll model it like the flechettes that it was on Yamato. Like, the, the sparks, basically, it shot out. Or comically oversized dragon's breath, I've heard it described. Like, if they were to model, like, 16-inch um, Type 3 anti-air as just a, sh a flak burst, I would love to see how big of a flak burst that would be. But oh well. 
I guess we'll just have to wait. That reminds me, another thing that, that we can look forward to is a uh, is the April Fool's event very soon. I think next week, next weekend probably. And I'm hoping, really hoping it'll be something naval oriented again. Because we have a lot of like top tier ground but with X pop culture reference and it's, it's really boring. At least to me it is. I spawn all the way in the back. Lovely. Actually, hold on, that's not Lanta? Oh, I'm going to mess him up. Time to loot that semi armor piercing. I've been actually enjoying the Japanese battleship grind. I really, I really, really liked Ise. Also, that is not an Alaska, is it an Alaska? That's. Isn't that a Des Moines? Or a Newport News, whatever it is. It looks like a cruiser to me rather than Alaska. Yeah. Yeah, na naval kind of progresses slowly, doesn't it? Update by update. And Newport has the antenna on the bow. Yeah. I knew one of them did, I just didn't remember it. But it's an Atlanta that is comically over be that's just up there. So let's um, give it a warm welcome. I'm missing it entirely. And there goes Des Moines, because it's Des Moines. Anybody we recognize? Not really. And there goes the Atlanta. I think it is, it's like a really early 109. What is that? That's a plane. Ouch, ouch, what is shooting me? Ooh, that's a 15 inch battleship. Fires in the secondary, so that's fine. Uh, we need to deal with that Sachsen? Fire? Oh, we need to deal with it quick. You know what I really would love to see when it comes to aircraft? There's more and more carrier aircraft. We're ahead of the enemy. Like, the British are basically missing their entire fleet air arm. The Germans? Like, if they if you added the German carrier based aircraft, that could be interesting. Like the BFO, the BF 109D, the Stuka with the foldable wings, that one funky biplane torpedo bomber. What happened to my main caliber Stalva? I just missed this person. Oh boy, there's lots of battleships. There's lots of battleships. I need to go full reverse because that's that's more firepower than I can deal with. Although the renown I might be able to one shot if it doesn't one shot me with that salva. High in the battleship. Fire in the third is never nice. And I'm now out of angle to use my rear guns on the now. Yikes. And that's also a Sean Horst. This is not going well. The 
back up Atlanta was brave? Why? It would have been really funny if that one shell that needed to run out. Sure thing, chicken. That's fine. Am I still alive? Can I please unmask my rear guns? Please, for the love of God. I would like to have the majority of my firepower. There. There we go. That should be a neat salvo, and that's looking all right. Please, I'm reckon. There we go. Jesus. Mm, Target rich environment, but uh, these targets shoot back. Still haven't died yet. Surprising. Shrugging off these shells. Giving a bit too much broadside though for my liking. Scare the other way if I could. Now let's put it ashore, or shall we? I probably shouldn't repair. Because broken ammo elevators don't really cause that much of a penalty anymore. Yeah, we really. I would love to see different like detonation effects for ships. Like if if a ship that I was not expecting to detonate the Sean Horst, but I'm gonna take it. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to see different detonation effects. Now the big explosion is still nice, but don't look right on ships. I would love to see like a massive flash fire come out of the magazine that got hit. I, I was I'm shocked I managed to detonate a Scharnhorst. But that really does make stuff easier. Um a hundred and sixty thousand away from it, I think. I was already over halfway before I started the stream. Like theoretically speaking I could get it during the stream, but it's probably not gonna happen. Unless I really, really spade my ESA quickly. Okay. Gonna complain about detonating ships I didn't think I was gonna detonate. Is it a Mississippi? It looks like one. Let's wait for the lead indicator. Okay, it's there. It is one away. And let's do about that. And let's start repairing because I kind of want my engines back. And my anti-air. Yes, the first of them is, I think. Like the H38, H39, whatever it is. Basically just Bismarck with 16 inch guns. I think it's fair game. Enemy forces have captured a zone. 
has suffered irreparable flooding damage. And they're gonna be deeper there, yes, good boy. Okay. Bye bye, Mississippi. Chicken is just being the target for cats lately, isn't he? Let's hold my fire for a second until the repair is done. Then we're really going to suffer. There we go. Just a bit too far forward to detonate right now. Where actually is the Amorak at this range? Like one and a half? Two? Yeah, it is, it is a crime that we haven't gotten Dunkirk yet. For the French. Also, oh damn, it is 16 inch. Actually, no, the 15 inch guns got the same sound now as the 16 inch guns, didn't they? They sound really meaty. Ah, too far back to that later now. Oh boy, I'm flooding quick. Oh, I didn't notice. Nope, none of the Montanas were laid down, so they technically were, would not be eligible for addition to the game. There we go, one final salvo. Ah, nothing. Let's do some torpedo bombing memes. Yeah, no, like the, the way they implemented the French Navy is just borderline a crime. That is an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. We'll have to see what I actually do for um, future partnership additions. So I'm personally of the opinion that my main nation, Japan, doesn't really get anything more interesting partnership-wise until Yamato. Because there's going to be a bunch of early war 16-inch battleship designs, basically. Third planet could. This is what is my torpedo speed again, 556, five, perfect. Bob and weave, bob and weave. God damn it. Oh, he decap see there, that's fine. I want to see if torpedoes actually do anything to battleships. That guy seems to be stationary, that's also a Mutsu, let's launch torpedo. And get the hell out of here. Is on target. Torpedoes still on target. Another thing you may have noticed, at least I did, is that torpedo trails are a lot shorter than they used to be. 
for this update, so they're a lot harder to spot. Come on, let's see what this does. Yeah, chicken, you are not you're having a rough time when it comes to uh ass, aren't you? I want to see if it actually kills the Mutsu. Because if it does, that's big. Look at the torpedo just straighten through for the magazine. No damage. God damn it. Oh well. That that's the main reason why I don't use torpedoes against battleships, because it just doesn't do anything. The airdrop torpedoes are counted as one meter depth. Unless if you actually drop a torpedo in a slight dive, the torpedo will dip down for the first few first little while of its travel. We've captured most of the strategic zone. But that'll it'll widen itself again to one meter depth. A little more effort and victory will be ours. And most torpedoes just do not have the penetration to go through battleship armor. At one meter depth. Oh well, it was a good experiment. You know, I, I like using the P1Y1 just because it's fast. And it's decently agile. If only. If only, but you can't. That's something that actually kind of annoyed me about the... Um, oh, what is it called again? Roadmap? Or like this, the first um, quarter of the year? First half of the year, whatever it was. Is that there's practically nothing mentioning naval? On the roadmap, at least. And that's just bad. Well, we're still armed with a torpedo. Let's see if we can torpedo something. Yeah. Um, over a thousand kilos would be a bit overkill. A thousand pounds is usually more than enough. But yeah, the, the bigger the bomb, the better, basically. Just keep it up, and victory will be ours. That's a Congo class, but the looks of it. There's a PGO 2 on the prowl. That's not good. Defend the B point. The thing is, I can't torpedo a PGO 2 now, can I? But yeah, I, I am of the opinion that naval needs a bit of love. Again, a bit of uh, I don't know, it's just some really big updates for it. Because Mutsu technically is like a is a jump, but at the same time it doesn't really feel like that big of a jump for naval. Mainly because it's just oh another battleship with slightly bigger guns, but to counter having big guns, it has no air anti air. So yeah. I would love to see like a naval focused teaser again for an update. Because I think that would be really great. Yeah, that that is one of the benefits of the, of the um, B7A, definitely, is just having offensive cannons so they can strafe stuff. Yeah, there's a PJ2 behind B. That's too high. Um, 
easy for me to shoot, really. I almost wish I was in a float plane now. Oop, there's a plane up. Let's see if I can harass it over front of the Never mind, game over. I still had a decent run in my, um... My e -Sith. Nah. We'll, we'll definitely get a Yamato and a Bismarck class in attack tree. Because it would be nonsense to not have them in attack tree. It's a pleasure having people to squad up with. We just see you around, chicken. Like, at, at one point, I, I, I kind of see the allure of having a Yamato class be premium and a Bismarck class be premium, but at the same time, really... The thing is, right... Are we going to get rank 7? For naval, and would that still just be battleships? I assume we'd get rank seven before, like the the true sixteen-inch battleships, right? But then, what do you use rank six premiums? Because technically speaking, the rank six premiums are just the ships we already have, the premium versions of them. I don't think so. I think that's a bit too pessimistic to think like that. I don't see I don't see a good reason to put a Yamato as a premium. Other than of course it, that me included, a lot of Japanese remains would buy a premium Yamato. I don't think they would do that. What I see happening more is them putting a Ki or a Tosa or an Amagi class as a premium. Rather than an actual Yamato. A, a sister of Bismarck, be, like the Turbits or the Bismarck being a premium, I could see that a bit more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, not, Yamato is still a ways away, for sure. Yeah, uh, I, do, I do see that. I do see, uh, yeah. We can still hold, hold our, you know, keep our fingers crossed for USS Salem in the tech tree. I believe they were. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not I'm not too sh sure on, on, like, naval history. I just know of the Amagis and Tolstas because I've seen pictures of them. I know they were actually... Great. I know they were actually laid down and even afloat, some of them. At least Tosa. Great, yeah, great first spawn, right? Absolutely banger first spawn. Although I'd hate to be that Mutsu that detonated out of spawn as well. Now, where is our buddy that just detonated me? Is he behind the rock? He probably is. That's a crunch depth. I don't really like these open maps. Just because I'm, I'm not good at long range fighting. Ooh, back up Mutsu. Oh, it would be funny if we got detonated again. Now they were over. Yes. Um, Mutsu was indeed the, the ship that detonated in port. We are unsure what it got detonated by. Um, but it's, it was some kind of fire in a magazine, apparently. From what I've heard. 
I do actually like seeing Sean Hosk get detonated. The invincible ship not being as invincible as it used to be. The enemy's getting closer to victory. I short all my shells. Did you do that twice to him now, cutie? You did as well. But he did get you back. It seems like the era of the Shornos domination is getting to an end. I don't mind if Shornos just keeps seeing getting sunk. Yes, Shornos can. I, I'm still not quite sure how you really detonate a Shornos, but I've seen quite a few of them go up in flames now. Which all the better because that is just a really annoying ship to face otherwise. It's still incredibly tanky, but you know it can be can be killed. Is there another Mutsu? Not in that flank at least. I really, really, really want to see the King George V and the Nelson class for the, for Britain. Because I think they look ab absolutely fantastic and they're apparently really good ships as well. Especially King George V was apparently really tanky. That class of ship. And the Nelson just looks stunning. A bit weird, but gorgeous in my eyes. Warspite, yeah, but at the same time, Warspite is just a 15 inch dreadnought. And like an old one at that. Yeah, that is indeed an awesome. Yes, but at the same time, although, again, if. if um. Let me, let me scroll this correctly again. How many of you remember that, like, that model leak from several years ago now. So that's not fun, is it? Ah, it's a kicker. Okay, just blew my front compartment apart, but it's fine. And I killed the crunch that. Okay, that's nice. Uh, I didn't suffer any flooding because of the destination above the waterline, so we're fine. But you know, I'm, I don't know, I just like the look of the Nelson class, it's funky, it's weird. And I love weird ship designs. Um, it's, it's okay, I guess, but it's like any of the other Japanese 14-inch battleships. Really good hitting power, can be detonated by a slight breeze. Well, other than that, yeah, I'm sure it was fine, I guess. Just don't expect to survive too long. Yeah, but genuinely do not even think of War Thunder Mobile as being part of War Thunder. It isn't, in the slightest. It just has some cooperation. And, um... Carrying the name, but it's 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 you really shouldn't consider the two games close to in any kind. The enemy is winning. We must counter attack. It is. The thing is, you, you having seen quite a few new players to naval and other Discord servers and stuff like that. What I find people seem to struggle with the most 
is just a different mindset when playing naval compared to ground and air. Because when it comes to naval, it's not so much about like not getting hit and not getting shot. It's more like knowing what you're getting shot by and how to deal with it. Also, something I see a lot in, in new naval players, especially when they come from ground or air, is like a whole mentality about kill stealing and getting their kills stolen. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. The, the only stat on naval that matters is this one. Damage done. Don't have to care about anything else. What am I getting shot by at the moment? Nothing I can see directly. Ah, that's my old friend that detonated me at the start of the match. Oh yeah, Coastal can be fun. Coastal is definitely a bit neglected as of late. That's for a while actually. But it's good fun. Although it is slower paced, but it depends on what you're playing. Because battleship gameplay, as you've noticed, is very slow. You have time to think, time to decide. If you play some destroyers, especially if you if you get like decent maps, like really close range maps, it can get hectic really quickly. And even more so if coastals with a large variety of coastal vessels you can face. I love how our entire team is just stuck behind the same island. I love the ding from detonations. Yeah. I, I would love to see the um, Type 3 AA shells, although I probably wouldn't actually use it in battle. Um, I'd probably just find it funny for the memes, but I would love to see that. Let's see if I can detonate the shot worst, because he seems to be moving at roughly the same speed in the same direction. Those shells are a bit too... F no, they're good, they're good. No detonation though, a bit too high apparently. Sharon Horse can definitely have an easier time detonating me than I can detonate it. Or it can just not shoot me. Yeah, I guess. Although, I, actually, to be honest, if Type 3 were to function like it, it actually functions, if you were to get shotted by just a shotgun of shrapnel, it would be quite a visual you know, spectacle in a battleship. I mean, the thing is, Japanese battleships actually do have a pretty good reload, especially with the 16 inch and the 18 inch guns have a better reload than you'd think, especially if you're used to the other ship game TM. And there goes the Sean Horse detonated. Uh, I, lo I love the fact you can actually do that to Sean Horse now. That happened. Who's a Hugo? Did, did you did did the Congo you shot like minutes ago just burn out or something?
It flows out. No. Oh. oh. Well, that'll explain why we're not winning the cup. Peters. I can hear him. Can I hear him? Or am I just hearing things? I am just hearing things. You can, you can. Um, you see that? That thing that's appearing above his head? That's me marking him for my secondaries. Manually controlling my signals at the moment, so yeah, doesn't matter. What is that? Ooh, it's not shot. Just... Kind of not expecting to survive too much longer in the food, so actually, I should be putting the left and getting behind that. Yeah, we should do that. I'm receiving a lot of attention from the ships I didn't catch them from. It's a float plane, okay. Let's see how much more fire we can take. Ah, he's sailing the other direction, I thought he was sailing the left. That's another thing, the, the damage cam is no longer like showing you what direction they're sailing in. It's always, you know, that perspective of the enemy ship, which gets really confusing. But oh well. Secondaries for the Mutsu, isn't it? Yeah. Let's keep going straight and get myself behind that rock. We should repair, actually. Get myself fully operational. I think I can weather the Mutsu shells for the time being. Ooh, that's actually a striking range. Nice, it's in the cap. It's not in the cap, so it doesn't actually matter too much. But I might as well. Rock though. And shield myself from the Mutsu. Yes, I know there's an island in front of me, that's the point. Three. I guess. Yeah. I guess that's the case. Well, the thing is, though, that you have to consider is that, like, the, sure, the official language, like for Belgium, is Dutch and French. But the Dutch spoken in Belgium is not the same Dutch as the Netherlands. 
same goes for the French. There's a slight very the dialect, different word usage, different sound. Is that looking good? It's looking decent. Uh, two from behind. That seriously must have been screw. But uh, I think the Mutsi is gonna work me over, isn't it? Yeah. Dialects can be a funny thing. Ooh, I lost three turrets. That's not often. Oh, that, that's the same here as well, Thunder. Same with the Dutch and Belgium as well. Okay, this is secondaries. I am just trooping with this fusil. Just absolutely shrugging them off. Do we bomb something? I feel like bombing something. Oh, clear skies is really nice. Uh, the Mutsu seems burning. Yep, it's dead. There should be a Saxon or like a Bayern somewhere around there, and I think that's our target. Yeah, I can, I can see that. What is that? I think that's a Congo class, isn't it? We should be far enough away from it, that's not a concern. Destroy the target. Yeah, that'll be our target. Yeah, I saw as much. Oh, you, you do not want nation-based based matchmaking. That is the last thing you want in naval. I, I'm perfectly fine with, with mixed matchmaking in naval. Because it'll actually keep ships balanced. By having to fight themselves. Like, could you imagine... Um, a full team of Atlantis, Hellenus, Fargos and like Des Moines... Against a Japanese or German team of cruisers? Could you imagine? I think even the same goes for destroyers, just the Sumners, Gearings, Porters, Somers against what Japanese destroyers? Doesn't seem like a fair matchup that does it. A little more effort and victory will be yours. Nice, that's a Congo Delta from that flank. So let's see if we can still do what I usually do when bombing battleships. A bit concerned that's a Krim, so its NTR shouldn't be too bad. That's a Congo behind him though, but he's far enough away, I think. I should have enough time to execute my dive. Here comes Krim's NTR. Kind of scary. And there we go, let's start to dive. Dodge and weave, dodge and weave. And what I want to do is deposit this bomb right next to his magazine. Refine, refine, refine. Deposit right next to the magazine. Pull up. There it goes, and there he goes. Bomb detonated the Bayern. I still have my brakes deployed. Let's retract him so we can get some speed out. And we just dodge and weave the anti air. Try to. Somebody attack him! And we should be clear. And 
That is pretty much as textbook a dive bomb I could pull off. Just dodging and weaving AA a bit, because I'm concerned about the comes A, but there we go, game over. There we go. Oh, that's Fuso Spaded now, isn't it? Is and it's another 13,000 RP. I get some messages. Nope. Hmm. Could figure out what that means pretty well. Well, he's ready for another one. Then so am I. And my Fuso didn't. That is equipped. And it's not so showing it's spaded just yet. Anyways, let's just equip some backups. Um, it is. I find it quite fun, but it's 2.3 for a reason. At 2.3, it's a really fun little plane. Um, I haven't had the greatest success with it against destroyers, mainly because destroyers are really fast targets and I'm not the greatest with the manual aiming system for that missile. But yeah, it works. I've seen I've seen people be very successful with it against destroyers. I haven't seen it being used against cruisers and up though, really. I like this map as long as I spawn close to that island, which I didn't. Relatively small match though. What do we have? Cargo ships, cargo ships, destroyer, but that's AI. That's just a convoy, that's a hipper, probably also part of the convoy, convoy, convoy. There's a battleship over there somewhere. There it is. Ooh, Mississippi. It looks like a Mississippi. Nothing else yet there. Yeah, let's keep this heading if we can. Magazine is against one dash away from the middle. So we do one dash away from the lead indicator. And let's see what that will do. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, it, it's part of the naval naval experience, I guess. Ah, way too short, wasn't I? Yeah, wait, one two five. What did I do? Shoot, undershoot by like two four hundred. Let's undershoot by three hundred. Two hundred. Two fifty. Two fifty. Let's see what it'll do. Ooh, it could have been really good, but I think his, his armor actually held. So 250 is roughly what I want to under adjust for. And I no longer have to deal with it. We have a Pittsburgh, another American unit. This camp, that's me. Yeah, I'm that's a player, that's for sure. No other battleships. Oh no, there's a Sachsen and there's a Mütze. Okay, let's not draw their attention yet, but let's deal with this cruiser. Thank you very much. 
Um, napalm bombs serve a very niche purpose, but normal bombs are more effective if you deploy them correctly. Napalm bomb, napalm bombs just burn the entire superstructure of a ship, no matter where they hit. So it's really good at destroying anti-air guns, but nothing much else really. Yes, I, I don't understand why the EC has float planes on its catapult, even though you can't use them yet. But it's one of those ships that does, for some reason. And there it is, Pittsburgh. Mm, let's see if you can maybe thin out the convoy a bit. Undershoot by this one. And yeah, just go there. In the meantime, we are reaching our destination pretty quickly. That's a criminal. Take him down. Let's see if we hit. We hit. Didn't really do that much damage. I think we overpanned. Really interesting target to shoot, though. Um, the, mm, well, if you saw what I just did with the 800 and how relatively easy that was, like the thing is, AP bombs work like they're supposed to, right? But to get the maximum effectiveness out of an AP bomb, you need to drop them going high speed and from very high up. And it's that very high up part that makes them really difficult to use with high accuracy. Because if you notice what I did with the 800 kilo HE bomb on that Byron, I just deposited the bomb next to his magazine on a one and a half second fuse delay, and it detonated next to the magazine. But I did that, I dropped that bomb from a very low altitude, very close to the target. If I wanted to do the same thing with an AP bomb, I'd have to be three or like two and a half kilometers up to do it. So I wouldn't recommend using AP bombs. I mean, if you want to try and use AP bombs just to LARP being a naval dive bomber, go ahead. But if you want to, like, really destroy targets, I wouldn't recommend it. Although it might be an interesting skill to learn. AP bombs work like they should. They actually function like AP bombs in game, but it's just with the way the game works, AP bombs are not useful. game again with my last like let's fire a salvo stuff at this guy see what it does and then be ready to load AP its magazine is almost yeah two two dashes two in a bit And detonated. 
That's so DAP. Before I leave my first salvo AP into that thing, but that's no longer necessary. Ooh, what do we have here? Mutsu? Looking for a cheeky peek around the corner. Ouch, that hurts. Why is there a Sean horse there? Since when is there a Sean horse there? Looking juicy, and it. Uh, okay, I could have sworn it was me detonating him. But well, so what I'm going to do now is turn my guns around because I'm never going to have the turning circle to keep up with the Sean Horst. But too late. That takes me through the bow. Because the Citadel plating of these battleships, early battleships, is great. Anyways, let's see if we can do the same thing to the Sean Horst as we did to Bayern. Probably not with all its end here. Actually, me and a couple of friends a whole while ago, we had an event that's basically a turn based game. And at some point, we had to sink a Sharnhorst with like aircraft. And we practiced sinking a Sharnhorst with Corsairs, and it was just so much fun. Because we did that battle then, uh, that, that event. And I think we dove like 14 or so Corsairs on a single Sharn horse and just nuked it. That was a fun time. Now, well, this thing is a lot bigger than a Corsair. But I do also have a bombsite. And that Sharn horse. Come on, come on. Post the bomb. Bomb has been deposited. Bomb is on target. Ooh, it didn't kill the Sharnhorst in one. Oh, that's surprising. That that bomb was right where I wanted it as well. That's a shame. That's really annoying, actually. I mean, it definitely messed him up, but that, that should have killed him. He might not recover from the flooding with a bit of luck. Yeah, because I think those compartments are permanently destroyed as well. So he's just flooding out now. I definitely killed his momentum. Practically the same. Harana just has more anti air guns by a fraction. But I, th I believe armor layout are genuinely identical. Bomb might not have killed the Sharnhorst, but it stopped him, that's for sure. And let's just keep going. I think the Sharnhorst is dealt with. Floating percentage on the cargo ships, can I? But that's just wrong because that cargo ship isn't damaged. What's going on here? I 
technically speaking, your clan, they already are able to do that. They already are. It's just that when one plane enters the field of view for an AA gun, they'll all shoot at it until it's dead. But if, for example, if you were to get attacked from two different sides, so there was a plane coming in from the left and a plane coming from the right, your AA guns would engage both. Because, of course, the guns on the left can't engage the target on the right. But I do understand what you're trying to say, is that... Like, they, they need to have some kind of, like, threat evaluation as well. Like, ooh, if a plane is flying away from them, like, keep, keep track the sky to see if, an, if another plane is coming towards them. Instead of having to manually do it. But oh well. I think um, part of me wanting aircraft carriers does also mean a bit of a rework of anti-air, the, the AI a bit. Like, my main concern when it comes to the addition of aircraft carriers, because that's the thing you really need to worry about when it comes to aircraft, is just AI. Just a bunch of AI stuff. Like the way AI would fly aircraft, the way they would try and land and take off from carriers. The way anti-air AI works, that kind of stuff. It all need to be looked at again. Is it a, that is a Yamashiro, isn't it? A Saxon right behind it. Or a Bayern, whatever. There was a shot shooting me. Well. Hmm. I'll get Harana now because I don't need to spade Fuso anymore. And Harana has a. Uh, whatever you call it, talisman on it. I don't have any camos on Harana yet. Oh boy. Uh. Cake down. Actually, no, yeah, you, you put the I and the J like in the wrong place, but it's cake down. At least that's how I pronounce it. It just means like luck tune. Which. Really means very well. It's Dutch, I believe. It's a Dutch cruiser. Yeah, it's cake down. Although I don't. I've heard that my my A's, my my I J's are a bit weird, so I'm not entirely sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. So I don't want to control my secondaries on this ship. Actually, I do, don't I? It's six inch guns. Yes, I do play naval. I played quite a lot. Is Kagdan fictional? I don't know. I'm not as familiar with the Dutch cruisers and ships in general. All I know is that they actually had a navy compared to us. That's rough dispersion on four miniatures. Not that it matters apparently. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Well, that's that's not quite right. That's not quite right. Their fanware, that pronunciation. Destroy the target. Well, I'm not familiar enough with the term and like sounds. Try and just describe it to you. Never learned the phonetic alphabet either, so.
Ooh, that salvo looks painful. Game's still afloat. Just lost a few guns. Front magazine is slightly less than a dash. So we can lead slightly less than a dash. There we go. Let's see what that does. I don't know why the Kronstadt is now standing still. There's a Scharnhorst. That self seems to be heading somebody's way. And there goes a Hugo. This thing is like two dashes to the turrets, dash and a half. Let's wait for lead. Let's do a dash and a half. Let's see what that, that salvo does. Also, I should probably switch on my AA gunners. I don't know how to switch off. Well, Yes and no, Fenner, you have to remember that English is more the amalgamation of all the European languages. But, but Dutch and German should be relatively close together, but then they're definitely not close enough together where learning one knows enough about the other. Oh, that might be good. A bit too high for detonation. Yeah, both me and QD are on our last ships. Um, I don't have. Did I maybe actually have a navy? I know there's this one. Um, country in the Axis was a meme for having like a high admiral, even though it was a landlocked country. Uh, also, yeah, ah, yeah, like that. I don't really care about like the things World War One dreadnought era battleships. I don't really care about because to to me, dreadnoughts just all look the same. They all function the same. But yeah, for Italy, that'd be nice. It is magazine is one dash front. One dash front, stationary, almost stationary. There we go. Yeah, that was right. Destroy the target! Let's wait for the repair to fire, but luckily it back together, and there we go. I, again, I don't really care for pre-dreadnought ships, and the problem, well, the problem I have with pre-dreadnoughts is that they just mix with cruisers. I don't really like those kind of ships being mixed with cruisers, because cruisers already have a hard enough time as is. You don't really need to deal with more armored stuff. Yeah, he is. But I'm hoping this time I can detonate him straight through the nose. Hmm. Well, I think like pre-dreadnought battleships, I think the things there there are interesting pre-dreadnought battleships and armored cruisers and stuff like that, but I just don't really care personally for those kind of ships. And I'm also for the opinion that currently we don't need, need like more armored, really armored stuff together with cruisers. That's going to go well enough on the that knows. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
If anything, I just like to have more actual cruisers rather than armored cruisers. Oh boy, what's my camera doing? There we go. Can I detonate the Sean Horst? Not at this range, I think. Is my AA firing at? Dive bombing Arada. Okay, 25 should be able to deal with that. Surely the 25 are able to deal with that, right? All 122 of them. Uh, uh, well, having lost most of them probably doesn't help. Good. Torpedoes? Yep, torpedoes in the water from the Sean Horse, but game's over. And I think I should have been able to dodge him. Yep. I mean, yes, but they're all right in game, although they don't reverse really fast enough and their velocity isn't the greatest, especially against jets. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm not really the biggest fan of the pre dreadnoughts being mixed in with cruisers. See how close am I to Mitsu? Ooh, almost sub 100,000. Oh, well, if QD is more up for more, so am I. So we keep going. Yep. I, I will say that uh, I'm not as active as I should be on this channel, really. Um, I have actually played World of Warships a considerable amount, I'd say myself, although I've actually never reached tier 10 in World of Warships. I've only The highest I've ever gotten was tier 9 of Izumo, Izumo. and that's the only tier 9 I've ever gotten in that game. There's, there's just aspects I don't like of it. I don't like the dispersion of the guns in that game, I don't like the ships are invisible unless within arbitrary range of use stuff. I don't like smokescreen spam, HE spam, the fact that your armor doesn't really matter, I can just be HE spam to death. The gimmicky use of like consumables, I don't really, there's just, I can, I can understand people liking World of Warships, it's just not for me. I don't like it. I don't like the way it plays, I don't like the, I don't know, I just don't like it. Then again, I only have... Again, I only really care for the Japanese ships, because I just like the look of them. The Japanese ships and World of Warships aren't really the greatest from what I know. I just nah, never really liked it. It's also because I don't like game modes where you only have one spawn. It's... it's I, uh, I had this problem with pretty much all of the... Well, with both World of Warships and World of Tanks, you just have one spawn. So you just look at the matchmaking, see where you're placed, and know if you're fucked or not. And then you die once, and that's it. Have fun. It's just not my cup of tea. World of Warships. Whilst at the same time, like, War Thunder is a game that I've played, um... Oh, I know. I know World of Warplanes has multiple spawns. I've also played World of Warplanes, but... I don't know. There's something about it, like... I've played World of Warplanes a, a bit, but there's something about it I just couldn't... Can't quite put my, uh... Can't quite describe to you what I don't like about it. I think it's the way, like... Looking around feels a bit clunky in that game. I have War on the Sea, I haven't really played it much because, to be honest, I don't like strategy games that much. I, I can't really think that well ahead when it comes to strategy games, like what I need and doing all of this moving on map stuff. 
I find it a bit boring, to be honest. Um, I have, like, long ago, right? That's that's a pretty old video by now. I, I liked his videos comparing the two games because they're, they're really well made. And pretty funny as well. Although his more recent stuff I haven't really watched. Afri African Gulf of Battleships is going to be a bit rough. But yeah. Um, I don't, I don't spend only my War Thunder time in naval. I, I do play the other stuff as well every now and then. Depends on what mood I'm in. But I mainly play naval. It's the mode I have the most fun in. I play a little bit of tanks. I play a little bit of aircraft. But mainly play naval. And on the YouTube channel, I'll only play naval most of the time. I think the one time I didn't was just to do like um, battle pass tasks. But that's a pretty old stream by now. We have one cruiser. Ooh, interesting. A three-man squad, but only one cruiser, which is not a player. Coastals. They're definitely coastals. Also, for some reason, I can't type in the squad chat. I can. Oop, are they here? No, they're still all AI. Yeah, no, we, the enemy like the enemy squad is not here, so they have to be in coastals. As SKRs at seven zero, I doubt it. That that would not be that would not be optimal, to say the least. But since there's no enemy battleships, let's do the sap and uh, lost one. That's a snazzy looking Alaska camo. Or they're in DDs, but if they're in DDs, they're even more screwed, to be honest. Because we can actually see them from here, but yeah, no, they're in coastals. I knew they were going to be in coastals. Interesting choice for a three man squad for all three of them to go into coastals. The thing is. I personally don't really see the point in doing coastals at this kind of PR. But then again, that's because I play to like grind ships. And I don't really care about winning or losing. Even though, technically speaking, by winning you grind better. But if you use a coastal to win a match, whilst you could have used the same time to just grind your ship, I don't know. I always felt weird about it. Here to the six, but that's an AI one. It's a musk farm, okay. We are losing. That is not enough lead for that thing. Um Ah, um you mean this one? This button down here? That is the... That decides what targets your AI gunners will shoot at. So for currently at the moment I'm manually controlling my secondary battery and my main battery. But I do have some 25mm guns all around the superstructure. And this determines whether they shoot at only aircraft, only ships, at nothing, or at all targets. As you can see, these ships have their AA gunners on uh, all targets, and they're blasting away in the SKR. Ooh, battle cruiser? Ooh, I saw that name before. It's a Scharnhorst again, yes. Yeah. Time to turn the guns around again. 
and blows the charm horse apart. Actually, let me show you uh, by actually like don't control the manu secondaries manually. They will now shoot at surface targets on their own. You will put them on aircraft only. They won't shoot at anything. Surface target only. They'll start shooting surface targets, of course. And then none is none. And both is both. The slog is going quite well, actually. I'm enjoying the use of the Alaska cameras. Noise. Probably focus on the Sean or more than anything. Ah, they're spawning in their battleships now. Because they got the two caps, and now, ooh, they'll win the match. I still loaded Sap, I need to load the AP. The Alaska's probably going to get into the AP before either of us do. We have a coastal over at sea. They, they still have one guy in a coastal, I think. Um, I've actually not noticed too much of it. It is definitely increased, but I don't think it's bad in any way. And again, I've mostly been playing just the battleships this patch. But I'm not entirely sure what it's like for the other stuff. That's looking like a good salve on your magazine. And it is. That's what you get for spawning in the coastal first, allowing us to get in good positions. Yeah, that's the nice thing about uh, market camos for naval skins, is they're usually dirt cheap. Usually. So they're always easy to get. If he's going to turn broadside again, he's going to cover the exact same page he did before. Ah, they have a Lennon and Grad, that's right, that's what that's the thing we're going to do. It's going to hurt. Luckily, he didn't hit the ammo. Is it too far back? Uh, it's a, bit, a little bit too far back. But let's fall on his side again. I'm not. That is just my Belgian flag. It is not the... I think it's the Romanian flag for that server. It is black, gold and red. Because yes, technically speaking, yellow on a flag is gold. I want to do with the Mutsu. Or I don't have to deal with the Mutsu. And that's now all three of his spawns gone. Was it really worth it first spawning a coastal? in winning if you don't get your research done because I'm willing to bet I might get more RP from this match than, than this guy will at least towards my battleships and that's the main reason why I never really understood first spawning coastals Sure, you win the match, but are you getting the research done you want to do? Thank you very much. 
And I'll definitely have fun streaming the menu. I do need to work on more videos, and I do have one planned for tomorrow as well. No problem. Whenever you feel like it, you can always hop in and ask questions. I do not mind answering questions. Yeah, that's that's why I also, I also dislike Ghost's first one, because he just makes the match shorter than it needs to be. It would be really funny if that salvage just detonated that BK instantly. Damn it. One could pray. One could pray to the snail. An RN Jesus. And there we go. Oh, 4,000 RP, could have been better. Really close to the flow pin as well. Yeah, the, the, I mean, damage has been increased a little, but it's... I wouldn't say it's like overbearingly more more damage. I don't know what I think about his, the, the damage changes. I like them. I've actually I don't actually have any complaints about them. But yeah. Oh yeah, I've, I've been one tapping some other battleships as well. I'm actually getting African Gulf again. Oh, but this time we're on the other side of the map. How exciting. That was a mistake. No enemy battleships yet? Oh. oh no. Oh no. Player Spey. And a player Mikuma. Oh boy. Um, I have, yeah, I haven't really played War Thunder Mobile that much, but I don't, I might, I don't really like it. There's a Congo. It is a Congo. Priority target then. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really like the mobile games that much. There's an Alaska and a Hyuga in the back, maybe, or Yamashiro. Magazine is one and a half, thereabouts, from the center of the Alaska. So one and a half. I think he's slowing down actually. So let's head back a bit. No, well, I do actually kind of like African Gulf. That's because I like rolling in ships. Even with ships ex as explodey as these ones. Yeah, it's like one and three quarters. That's a lead I want to take. Let's wait for the range update. There go. And it's gonna push some on the test magazine again. Go. It's fire, fine. And an enemy Sean Horse. Let's actually see if we can detonate him in this range. Range turrets is two. Thereabouts. Those are the 
Mm, all right. Please detonate him. Nah, he detonated me instead. It actually splashes magazine there, apparently. No, they're both heavy anti airships. That's not. Awesome. Let's just do back a piece here. Wait for all these guns to turn around again. Should have got detonated. Is it another Alaska I've seen? We might as well give him the good news. One and a half, one and three quarters blips again. HMS Argent Core is one of seven turrets, right? Seven dual turrets? Let's turn away because I might run into QD if I'm not careful. There goes the Alaska again because you don't sell broadside in Alaska. Smoke, but it's just, you know, Judy can help. Let's see, can we do something about this Sean Horst? Yeah, again. I know. That would be that would be a really fun ship to see, just because of the sheer amount of guns. I'm splashing the magazine ever so slightly every time. So I just need to aim higher because it's actually sailing away from me. Okay, that's just engine damage. We can deal with engine damage. I should have expected torpedoes, seeing as it was a Makuma earlier. Oh, I see a torpedo. That's a guy in the Alaska that's clearly not happy with me. One and a half, one and a half. Which is not nice. The Congo, I believe. So I'm still trying to detonate me as well. Those two have 16 inch guns, Fender. At least all the 16.1 inch guns. Ah, there I go again. Let's see if we can get a, a bomber closer to Sharnhorst now. Hmm, 
cloud cover is not nice. the Mikuma, I believe. That's, I think, a port class destroyer. And that's our target. Let's just hope we can get past this PR-206 without it switching to us, because those things are lethal in their AI control. Single adding close to our target. And another Pier 2-6 spawn below us. That's not good. That's not good. Because again, those things are lethal under AI control. They will just slap you out of the sky. Is it a Pier 206? It looked like one at least. That's a dash cant as well. Over there. Oh yeah, they do. They're incredibly dangerous. The Sean Horse seems stationary. Here comes the 30 mil again. At some point it'll jam its guns or run out of ammo. Opening Bombay. The Sean Horse is indeed stationary. So let's see if we can toss this bomb. The bomb tossing is not as accurate. Come on, come on. There we go. That might not be perfect, but we'll be close enough. Ah, come on. We can't spoil the challenge the bomb anymore. There we go. That noted. And again, that was by me missing the Sean horse and just landing the bomb next to his magazine in the water. Didn't get much done in my ESO though, did I? Nah, that was really only two kills. Squad. Another match done. And that is the float plane unlocked and less than a hundred thousand away from Mutsu. Mm. Probably want to go with shrapnel protection, shouldn't I? Although I don't actually really know what that module does. So I'm kind of more interested in getting more speed out of my ship. I think that's what I'll do as well. And why not also activate some big old boosters? And now I have a seaplane on the catapult. Ooh, very important difference. I mean, I, I vaguely know what it does, but it's negligible. For as far as I know, it just means you take slightly reduced damage, but like very slightly. But now that shrapnel damage has changed, I don't even know that the module really does anything anymore. This is not a great battleship map. I'm actually tempted to go here and like do something on this island here. Let's see if that'll work. 
일단 지그고 오케이 that's, that's an odd choice it seems I was not the only battleship to spawn here at least oh then of course my squad mate Chikugo. ah Sean was in the back and aha uh -huh, Shimikaze Either that Chiku got, got horribly uptered by his squad mates, or he knew exactly what he got himself into. And if he knew exactly what he got himself into, then he should know he could target with battleships. Um, what do we have here? Two AI cruisers, I don't really care. The over there. Did, did none of them. Oh, there did. There's a Sharnhorst over there. Let's see if we can mess with them a bit. Let's see his direction of travel. Before deciding where to shoot. He's heavily angled in towards me. We don't really want to like deviate far from the leader of the The forces have Oh, are, are we now with the three-man squad that just did the PJ the Ghost of like two matches ago? I think we are. Short, but quite a while here. Yeah. Another full salvo. I think go left of it. I am giving the charge the headache. And I would love to keep it that way. This turn, probably not. That's gonna. Oh well. What will happen is I'll hit this corner, I'll slide off, but my nose will be looking like there. I think, will I even slide off? I probably will just come to that halt. And if I do, I'll probably just back up again. Definitely made the wrong choice there. So, oh well, let's back up. Okay. Giving the Sean horse a headache. That's Sumner, wasn't I? I keep knocking at turrets on the charmers and it's great. Let's just keep doing that. There goes another big ol' explosion. 
Bubble of the Charm Host. And there it finally goes. Destroy the target! That's a crunch stop, so that would be an interesting thing to shoot. That is. The thing is, he's getting close to a coastal area. We need to deal with him. to figure out where I need to lead. Well. Is any Sean Horst? The bully? What are my ranging shots up to? The turret. And we're going to half, sa half salvo this Sean Horst. Speaking, the same number of shells. We have a fire, a higher rate of fire than the Scharnhorst. We're half salvoing it. Especially when it just nose in like that. I can fire six shells back, and I can fire six shells at it at a time. My six shells will fire every 16 seconds, whilst his fire every 20 something. Now, of course, he could just ammo rack me in one hit. But we'll see what happens. There we go, fine. I think I just lost. I lost a gun barrel actually now. doing too well. Um, 
somewhere... I think I just got below 100,000 to it. But I think this might be the last match of this stream, actually. It's getting quite late here. But before we end the stream, I'll just pass sail the Mutsu again. Just to listen to what sound the guns make. Because the 15 and 16 inch guns now make a different sound and it sounds really good. Yeah, definitely good progress. I think I did a little bit of over 150,000 today. There we go. Sunk a Sean horse from full health to detonation, and I only lost 12% crew. Could have gone a lot worse than that. The problem is, though, is that we're losing. Though I don't care too much. I sunk a Sean horse. I'm happy with that. Is it? Oh, it's gonna get a full Fortnite JP salvo in just a second. There are two of them apparently. You got lucky on mine not being on target. Yeah, that guy going out of cover, cover was definitely a mistake on his end. The Renown is such a good ship. G good looking ship at least. The shame it was just an event ship and not an actual tactical ship. Torpedo bomber. Actually carrying a torpedo, what a chad. Isn't that a thing for all ships, really, that their waterline is a bit too high? Well, then Renown's quite a great creature, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's, it's in a lot of ships that the waterline is actually pretty. There's another Sharnhorst. Lovely. Now oh, that's the M802. Who would have guessed? Well, time to turn around, get the guns on target, and just bully this Sharnhorst then for the rest of the match. Oh, they look very good. Not that World of Warships is a bad looking game, because I think it, it's, it's definitely improved over the years. But I, I don't think you can beat the models in this game. A little water could be a bit better in this game. Oh well. Now. 
my salvas lined up again. For maximum Sean Horst bullying. Mountain is making targeting a bit more difficult. That's the life somewhere. It is. Ooh, he's actually a really good target right now. I just fire my gun so I can't hit it. And the game's about to be over as well. Come on, I can still detonate it. Come on. Oh well, that'll be the match to end today on, I think. I've been streamed for three hours now. Yeah, that's alright. There we go. 88,000 away from Mutsu. And QD, thank you very much for the squad as well. And before I actually end the stream, I just want to listen to the guns again. And yeah, the final things to say for today then. As always, thank you for watching my streams. Always, always nice to see. Especially you turn out like this. I've got a video in the works that I'm hoping to get out tomorrow. It will be another one of my Should You Spade um, videos. And I'm hoping to, to get those out like once every week. But I'll have to see. I also have to see if my procrastination will actually get in the way or not. Let's switch up the colors. And listen to the main caliber guns. Let the aircraft fly away. Those are some meaty sounding guns. Very nice. But so yeah. 88,000 away from Mutsu, and that's definitely gettable but somewhere in the next week. But that'll be for over the course of the next week. Maybe tomorrow, if I feel like it. If I want to procrastinate in my video, but yeah. Um, so I'm going to do one ship at a time again. Because I find that doing ranks just takes too much time. It, it also means that I have to replay all the ships of a rank. Then go over all of them again. And it gets boring very quick as well. Because I, I have a fixed format for Should You Spade. And doing like six ships in a row, one after the other, gets very boring to me. <laughs> but yeah, I'll do one ship at a time. I have myself an RNG wheel that selects me a ship to, to, to choose as well, so I don't have to think about what ship to do. Um, and I hope to try and get those churned out once a week. But I'll, I'll see what happens. Anyways, thank you all for watching. And I'll be back next week at... Roughly the same time, if all goes well. So yeah, see you all around.